Hey guys, I am so overjoyed to be back with you. It has been a little bit of time, but this is the entire reason I am making this video now. I need to go inside. You probably noticed I was a little bit less active on social media, but I really, really needed to just go inside to figure out the last 10% of my rosacea journey. But when I last spoke to you guys about my rosacea, I was having, I think I had one flare up three months previous, having these little itty bitty flare ups, right? Well, since that video, I haven't had a flare up, which is very exciting. And I Googled, how long can you say that you're cured of a disease? Like how long does it need to be? And it was pretty skeptical, but I'm gonna say that I'm cured of rosacea because I have had a flare up in a year, which is pretty amazing. What I wanna talk about is that last 10% of how I figured out my rosacea. But I'm gonna go through the whole process of how I treated my rosacea in four steps. Because I know that it can be so incredibly overwhelming 23 and being told you've got an incurable disease that you're gonna live with for the rest of your life that came on overnight. It is so overwhelming. And given the current situation that the world is in and people are under so much stress, Everyone is having more skin issues, more gut issues, more mental health issues than ever before. And I just think that we need to nurture each other and look after each other. So I am so excited to share this with you in the hope that it brings you the same joy that it has brought me in the hope that it brings you a little bit more information, a little bit more insight. I think these four steps will really tie everything together for you. And I'm really excited to hear from you guys. And I really, truly, hope it helps. It worked for me. Four steps. The first step is a massive one. I really want to talk about our nervous system. So how is your nervous system tied in with your rosacea? How is our nervous system tied in with this heat that flares up through our face? The thing is that I was constantly in this state of sympathetic nervous system, complete overdrive, like fight or flight, all the time, whether it was in relation to like my gut issues were causing me to be in that sympathetic nervous system stimulation, stress, whatever it was, the first thing we have to talk about is mindfulness and managing your stress load, calming down your nervous system. If you take anything from this entire video, please just take, never underestimate the effect stress can have on your skin, your health, and everything else. Why do we need to calm down our nervous system? Well, the thing is, most of us operate our lives in this complete sympathetic nervous system overdrive. And what that basically means is that resting and digesting is turned off and our body is highly stimulated all the time. What that does is drain your adrenals in Western medicine. In Eastern medicine, what it means is it compromises your kidneys. And what that means is you don't have this grounding. You're more reactive to things when things happen. You, instead of being proactive, you probably find in your life, you're reactive. I know when I was the most sick that I was, my mom was like, I don't know you anymore. You're so defensive. You're so quick to defend yourself. And it's because we are, we're in this fight or flight, like trying to protect ourselves. When we are under a lot of stress, our organs get under constraint. When things get constrained, they get tired, they get fatigued and the heat, the energy, it kind of just get, it gets lost and it rises upwards and we get this heat, this flushing through our face. It's kind of like, have you ever felt frustrated or you've bottled up an emotion and you can literally almost feel this steaming coming up, rising upwards, you know, throughout the body, heat rises. I love the story with that is we have to manage our nervous system if you want to manage your rosacea. My routine right now is looking like waking up before everyone else so no one is interrupting me. I also go to bed earlier than everyone else. I go, I write in my journal, I get off my chest all those things that I know trigger my rosacea, all those things that make me feel like I've got that heat in my body that I need to release. So it's anger, it's frustration, it's resentment. All of these emotions, these low vibrational emotions that are heavy on us, I get them down on paper. If I'm feeling really frustrated, I literally sometimes write for like 20 minutes. I'm just like, oh, <laughs> you know, and it might be first world problems, but it's, it's important to me. So I'll do that. Usually it takes five minutes. Let's hope I'm not having a really bad day. And then what I'll do is I'll do my breathing exercises. So the first one I love to do is alternate nostril breathing. So in Eastern medicine, the left side of our body is our feminine and our right side is our masculine. 
And I find that with heat, it's very much like a masculine symptom, you know? It's very like overpowering and very bold and hot. You know, when you think of like hot or cold, what would you think of as masculine or feminine? I find it's really beneficial for me is doing alternate nostril breathing. So you basically block one nose. Breathe out the other. Keep going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. If I, if I was having a day where my rosacea was really bad or I felt like I was really operating in my masculine and I just needed to chill the hell out, I would actually breathe through my left nostril and out my right nostril and I wouldn't repeat the other side. I would just keep going, keep going, transferring that energy over until I felt centered. The second thing I like to do is another breathing exercise which stimulates our parasympathetic nervous system, which basically is breathe in for five seconds and try and breathe out for 10. Okay, obviously a bit hard to do while I'm talking, but you get what I mean. So when your out breath is twice as long as your in breath, you are putting your body in that state of resting and digesting. That's exactly what we want. That is bringing the heat that's operating up here through the face down, 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 where it's meant to be. Down in our kidneys, down in our organs for digesting our food, all of that goodness. So that's my number one thing. Never ever underestimate the result that having a nervous system that is completely in overdrive and how that's affecting your skin, in particular, your rosacea. Okay, so the second thing ties into the first, but it's emotions. And I did touch on this briefly when I did my previous video. But honestly, I have a story to share with you and it is literally craziness. So I was doing energy work with a practitioner I always work with. She's an angel and she's helped me so much. I had this feeling, right? I just felt like I had this like compression in my chest. And I said to her, like, I don't know where it's coming from, whatever. Anyway, we ended up like digging into it, digging into it, digging into it, digging into it. And what we uncovered was I was fearing so many things. I was fearing the state of the world. I was fearing, am I gonna be able to go back to America? I was fearing, when am I gonna be able to see my family again? You know, all of these things that all of us right now are currently experiencing, you know, it's just, it's just the fear of the unknown. And I think that's why anxiety has also just gone through the roof. Anxiety is literally fear of the future. No one knows what the future holds. So we've all got this fear inside us. And when she tapped into that fear and I acknowledged it, I acknowledged what all the fears were, and I told myself, I have full trust in my body because a big fear with me was, am I going to get sick again? I told myself, I trust my body. With all the fears around the universe, and everything that's going on, I just said, I have got trust in the universe's divine timing. I have got trust that whatever's going on right now, it has a solution. There will be an end and everything will be better in the future. And I just kept telling myself this, kept telling myself this. Literally, I felt the heat in my body dissipating. It just reminded me of how much our emotions are physically stored in our body, especially in the liver. So the liver is the wood element. Anger, resentment, all of those like heavy emotions are always associated with our liver. And when you look at Chinese medicine, rosacea is usually directly linked to heat rising upwards from the liver. So I found that truly fascinating. And another little story I have is I went on a woman's retreat, did embodied movement. I had never done this before. I was a dancer. So tell one to eight what steps we're doing, like that's what I'm comfortable with. We ended up doing embodied movement where you all close your eyes, you're in a circle with all of these women, and you put on different songs, and you just move however your body wants to move. Like if you want to dance like a crazy person, like you can do whatever you want. And then she put on this song, she was like, I need you to shake. And I shook my body and I shook my body and I shook my body. And all of a sudden I started crying and I felt this heat rising up through my body and it was so overwhelming, but I felt this massive shift. And that's what embodied movement does. It's shifting physical emotions that are stored in our body. Honestly, if we can all come to terms with the fact that our emotions affect our physical body, we will all be so much better for it because I can't tell you how much this last 15% of my health, my overall happiness from just releasing these things from my body. And the rosacea, it doesn't exist anymore. I can just tell anyone, if you can control your nervous system and if you can go inside, deeply inside, uncover those emotions, it 
is painful, obviously. It's challenging, it's hard. But if you can release those emotions, you can release that stagnant energy because things that stagnate generate heat. If you can release those stagnant energies, I promise you, not only will your rosacea be better, your mental health will be better, your overall health will be better. You'll have more energy because the energy can flow properly. That was something that I always believed in, but truly until I had those experiences, those extreme experiences, and I realized I have to share this with people, stored emotions can manifest all rounds of illness. And this goes back thousands of years in Chinese medicine. Each emotion is directly attached to each organ but truly I experienced it for myself. So if you can do anything for yourself today, for your skin today, is to work on your mental health, work on releasing emotions and trauma. I'm here for you, I get it. Next thing, which you've already covered. So I'm gonna just like dust over this really quickly. Gut dysbiosis. If you have SIBO, you're like 60 something percent, I told you in the other video, more likely to have rosacea. So check, tick that off, check you don't have SIBO. You can do a saliva test or you can do a breath test. I did a breath test. Um, but honestly, a lot of times symptoms are proof enough. The next thing as well with gut dysbiosis is leaky gut. Every single person on this planet, unless you aren't touched by environmental chemicals, pollutants, toxins in our food, stress, has some level of leaky gut. You're just on a spectrum. Have you got a little bit or have you got a lot? Because I know for sure that I had a lot. And leaky gut is the last thing that I'm still mending. It takes a really long time. Gut's leaky. Molecules that aren't meant to transfer through into the bloodstream can get into the bloodstream, which increases an inflammatory response, hyperactive immune system, immune response, autoimmune disease, all those things. And it's been so studied. I can't stress you enough how much this has been studied since I've been focusing on my leaky gut and it's everything together. It is this four pronged approach, but whenever I focus on my gut health, my skin health gets better. My mental health gets better. It's that gut brain axis, the body. That's why I love holistic medicine. And I'm so excited to be a practitioner soon because literally it's just absolutely fascinating how every single part of our body is directly linked and interconnected from our thoughts, to our emotions, to our physical body, our spiritual body, everything. So to continue on with gut dysbiosis, the last thing is food. Food is our friend. Food is not to be feared. We covered fear and emotion. That is not helping anyone. Food is our friend. My only recommendation is yes, try and eat foods that are lower in histamines. Of course, that's a given. But more than that, try and eat foods Instead of saying it has to be low FODMAP, it has to be low histamine, it can get really overwhelming. It gets to a point where I've had full meltdowns being like, what do I eat? Just eat things that are nourishing by nature. Things that are cooked. Soups, stews, broths, all of those good things. Things that your mum used to make, casserole. Things that have been cooked for a very long time that are easy to digest. Have lots of greens but have them cooked and have a lot of really good healthy fats. Things like MCT oil, so rich in caprylic acid. If you've got any bad bacteria in your gut, that is gonna be so hugely beneficial. So I can't stress enough how much good fats are so important. I eat so much fat, can't live unless I've got like a hundred avocados in the house. Olive oil, coconut oil, all of these things is so good, so nourishing, amazing for your hair health too, amazing for your cognitive function, just everything. Good fats, cook your leafy greens and eat things that are really nourishing and easy to digest. Uncomplicate things. I know it can get really overwhelming. Mindfulness, mindfulness and nervous system. We've had emotion, trapped emotion and releasing trauma, gut health, hormones, big one. Hormones are massive. The last things in my journey have been healing this leaky gut once and for all and regulating my hormones because as you know, I also came off contraception at the start of last year. And that in itself has been a huge journey because I was on contraception from literally pretty much the day I got my period. So it's been a huge process. Hormones play a massive role with rosacea. 
So this is what I'm talking about, about everything being connected. If your gut health's not quite right, your hormones aren't going to be quite right. If you're quite stressed, operating up here, your cortisol is going to be stealing all your sex hormones. It's going to be eating away your estrogen and your progesterone, which creates a whole other wealth of problems. And that's why it's this four pronged approach. I went from having really low estrogen to all of a sudden having really, really low progesterone. I was experiencing lots of mood swings, depressive tendencies, but I knew I wasn't depressed. Sometimes I would just wake up and just feel like so not with it and not myself. When I was doing the energy healing and we were connecting with each other and connecting with my guides, she was saying, you know, like that last part from emotion to do with the rosacea and the heat that's in your body is your hormones. And it comes back down to the kidneys, nourishing the kidneys, trying to really heal that adrenal fatigue. So I'd really recommend that anyone with rosacea problems gets a hormone check, which I just think when people think skin issues, especially in our society, you know, it's just like dermatology, which is amazing. I never want to take away anything from Western medicine. I think we're so lucky to have it. But you know, dermatology, it's the view of the skin. No one ever asked you what else is going on. and that was my journey and that's why it took me so long to figure out how to heal because I had no one telling me that Georgia this is a multifaceted approach so that's it from me I would really appreciate guys I have created a website that I love and I have put so much nourishment and so much goodness into it I would be so grateful if you could head over there I also put everything in this video in writing in an article over there as well so you've got a reference that you can go back to instead of trying to find three minute 36 when she said this. I'd be really grateful if you could have a look at it. I'm gonna link it just here. Let me know what you think. Please, please comment how you're going with your rosacea, how any of my tips have helped you, and please also comment any videos that you guys would really like to see because I'm here and I'm here to stay. So I just wanna tell you guys how much I appreciate you. I understand the journey that you are on and I am here through it all with you. 110%. So I love, I appreciate all of you. Thank you so much for engaging and taking the time to listen to what I have to say. Always remember that it's my journey and I'm currently not a health professional, but I'm just here to share my story in the hopes that it benefits some of you.